My first novel is a coming-of-age story set in the 70s, sort of involving two girl cousins who um, impact each other disastrously. So when I was thinking about a second novel, um, I actually had no idea. I was in the weeds. I really had no idea what I was going to do and all felt sort of random. I could write about anything and I was waiting for inspiration. And as luck would have it, it came um, kind of out of the blue. It was one of those ideas that seemed to fall from the sky right into my lap and kind of announce itself, ta-da, as the absolute thing that I needed to be working on. So I had a general idea that I might write a book set in the 1920s, uh, sort of involving a writer, and knew I should re uh, read Hemingway's A Movable Feast, which is a memoir of his time set in Paris. And the moment I cracked the spine, I was just absolutely transfixed. What a story, what a singular time in history. And here was Hemingway, Hemingway making the writer he would later become, and, um, and making the man he would later become. When I began working on this book, I started with biographies of Hadley's life. There are several very good ones, and many, many, many more biographies of Hemingway's life. And then I found an archive of the love letters that Hadley wrote Ernest during their courtship, which are archived in Boston at the John F. Kennedy Memorial Library, along with lots and lots of his papers and manuscripts. And um, it was really remarkable for me to sit with her voice and to be um, absolutely swept away by the, it's a love story, the beginning of one of our greatest, I think, love stories, at least in literary history, um, to hear her voice, the candor and the humor and the, and the intelligence, they had great nicknames for one another and they had all sorts of little, this, this private patois that is so endearing and evocative. You know, I think that Hemingway gets a bad rap, particularly in his later life. I want to show a side of Hemingway that we've never seen before, one that's incredibly warm and vulnerable and human, and to show a side of him as he's making himself the writer, as he's making history. Um, but I also think that the complexities of the love story between Hadley and Ernest are timeless and that her challenges as a woman and her roles as his muse, as his lover, as his wife, as the mother to her, uh, to their child, are the same issues that women today struggle with. So I guess I want people to feel like they understand her, particularly women. They understand her struggles, they understand the, um, the depth and complexity of what it must have been like to be married to such uh, a powerful and, um, you know, he was larger than life, right? So part of my process for this book was to find in biographies a little bit of literary lore and then build those out, inventing dialogue for these characters, which was actually wildly fun. It was unbelievably liberating to take F. Scott Fitzgerald, who I've always admired so much, and Zelda and sort of put them in action. Um, there's a scene when Zelda gets wildly drunk and jumps off a rock naked into the Mediterranean, and another scene where Ezra Pound is recounting a story of how he lost his first teaching job in Indiana for roasting a chicken and seducing an actress, and they're swilling back absinthe, and, and it was just so deliciously fun for me to, to write those scenes, much more fun than a writer should be allowed to have. I think that regardless of the um, heartbreaking end of the Hemingway's marriage, that they really did have a love for one another that was profound and real and true and everlasting. I think that he loved Hadley to the end of his life and impossibly, no matter how he hurt her, she loved him to the end of her life as well. When Hemingway committed suicide in 1961, in his typewriter were the pages of a movable feast and it's incredibly moving to me that at the end of his life he was reliving that time those early years in paris the purity and the innocence and the the goodness the richness of their connection my book is a chance for hadley to come forth and add her point of view her voice her warmth her richness um, and that's really what i hope readers take away from the paris wife